it's really hard to stick to something, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a work, whether it's a wellness, whether whatever it is, it's really hard when you feel like you've got to start over every day and you got to talk yourself into yeah. it every single day. Right. Creating habits to where it's more of a secondary, it's, I don't have to think about it. It's just, it's just kind of, I just do it now. It's right. an automatic. Happy New Year's, Ty. Happy New Year. We made it. 2022. Dude, so glad 21 <laughs> is over. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I don't blame I don't blame a year for anything. Whatever yeah. whatever bad things happen or unfavorable things happen, it's my own fault. Well, I think the last two years are showing us that this year's probably gonna be worse. Yeah. So oh. <laughs> I'm mentally preparing for 2022 to be a, a dumpster fire like 2021, 2020. Uh, yeah, no real there's a local station they do like a, a star up, star down type of deal. Like yeah. all right, hey, the cowboys doing better or are they doing worse? Yeah, the years are definitely starring down. <laughs> the trajectory is starring down for sure. But you know what? The good thing is it's a fresh start. That's right. We get the opportunity now to to make the best of it, which, mm -hmm. again, by this point, we're kind of used to all the mandates and the, the navigating and, you know, all that. So hopefully we've gotten to a point where we can start to make the best of it. Yep. Um, the shock, the initial shock is over. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, hopefully, and I know things are crazy right now with Omicron, um, but hopefully, or thankfully, it's looking like it's not quite as deadly mm -hmm. as the first uh, the first two. So hopefully yeah. that continues. To Is be it case. just me, or every time I read Omicron, I think Omarion? Omarion. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think that's what I think yeah. of. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know that's not something to joke yeah. about. That's no. super insensitive. Hey, but if you are kind of lost at what we're talking about, uh, you're listening now to the One Shot Podcast. That's right. Uh, formally... And we're going to stop saying this, but formerly the Darren Woodson show, um, all the same, same, same team, same mission. Uh, but just again, the new branding helps us really capture what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the goals that we, or I know one of the goals that we set out for this year, I know everybody set their new year's resolutions, but one of the goals that, that we set out for this year, especially for these round table episodes is to be more evidence and fact-based uh, the first two years of the show our roundtables have been very much experience-based and that's mm -hmm. fine there's nothing wrong with that and it, but it's been very much anecdote mm -hmm. and this is what I live through this is how I approach and, and again that's great and mm -hmm. that's awesome and we're going to continue to do that that's right. but I think a goal that we have going into 2022 and throughout 2022 is to not be so reliant on personal experience and yeah. start looking well, what do the studies say what do the experts say Let's take what they say. Let's give our opinion on that. Let's mm. digest that information because we get it that as a listener, most of us, we don't have time to, to do all the research and to really mm. fact check everything. And that's what we want to be here in 2022 is more of a fact base mm. and to do that research for you. Yeah. And that you can look to this podcast uh, as a source of truth and a source yeah. of information. Again, that doesn't mean we're going to change and, and totally overhaul everything, mm -hmm. but it does mean that we do want to start um, looking into things more as opposed to just solely relying on personal experience. Right. One of the things, and, and we do, and, and this is kind of a little plug, is as you're listening and following us, give us feedback. Give us feedback on social media. Give us feedback on uh, the Apple uh, podcast platform where you can write a review and, and we look at those. And I yep. mean, some of the things that we've gotten is, okay, Hey, look, you need to kind of change up the topics. They kind of feel like they're the same. So we are going to be changing it up. And one of the, and we do listen to feedback as well. And one thing that I've gotten from someone, um, the immediate family member of mine is that, Hey guys, there's a bunch of opinions from a bunch of meatheads. Nobody really cares. <laughs> it's my sister. She's super critical, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, and like Ben said, there's like, okay, we hear you. We're gonna we're gonna not just pick a topic and and freelance and talk about what we think it is, which, you know, that's what podcasts kind of are. Yeah. But uh, but we're gonna bring in, you know, whether it be a book, whether it be an article, whether it be uh, some sort of white paper, some study, and we're gonna actually talk about it. And and again, give 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 tangible takeaways for you to say, okay, hey, look, he, they brought in something. Yes, they flavored in their opinions and their thoughts from their experiences. Cause that's what it's all about. Right. Every, every 
fact of knowledge is based from experience at some level mm -hmm. or another. So we're, we'll give that, but man, we just want to, we want to encourage you. Okay. Maybe this sparks you, you disagree with us and it sparks you to go do some research and yep. it gives you the fire to go do it. And then you can use that to your benefit in your personal life. So that's really the goal through this whole thing. Yeah. And speaking of that, uh, as Tyler said, we're going to start looking at books and articles and things like that. And a book that, that I picked up this, uh, these last few weeks over the break, uh, is a book called atomic habits by James clear. And Atomic Habits is actually the number one, rated the number one book on Amazon last year. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's a very popular book. People know about it. People are talking about it right now. Um, and I thought this coincided perfectly mm -hmm. with the beginning of the year because as I said, a lot of us are setting New Year's resolutions and goals and things we want to accomplish this year. But we're not exactly sure how we're going to go about accomplishing yep. those things. Because every year we say the same thing, right? We're going to do this, we're going to do that. How many, of those, how many times do we... Yeah actually succeed at accomplishing those goals. And yeah. so the goal with this book, and, and this is going to be a four part series we're going to go through the next four roundtable episodes we're going to go through is digesting this book. We're not going to tell you everything about the mm -hmm. book. The goal is that you go out and pick up the book yourself right. and that you read it yourself because maybe you have a different take than what we have, but we're going to highlight different aspects, things that we feel are relevant and helpful that can help you establish habits that are going to eventually work towards you accomplishing mm. those goals. So as I said, the book is the atomic habits by James clear. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it wherever books are sold. Maybe it would be helpful if you did pick up the book and read along with us, but mm -hmm. that's what we're going to dive into these next few years. But before we get there, did want to do our wellness tip of the week. It's always is brought to us by our friends at sleep number. And it's funny over the weekend. Uh, and this is totally organic. This wasn't planned at all, but we were driving back from out of town and my wife said, um, that the problem with the sleep number bed mm -hmm. is that when you go out of town, you've been so <laughs> spoiled that there's just no good sleep. We yeah. were out of town two nights this weekend and you can tell so much the difference mm -hmm. in your quality of sleep when you slept in your sleep number for a month straight and then mm -hmm. some other bed, some other generic brand bed. So yep. that was funny. She, t she said that out of the blue. I didn't, it wasn't like, Hey, I'm going to, Hey baby, know, give me a quote for the yeah, podcast. Yeah. We got <laughs> I was like, that's, that's interesting because I felt the exact yeah, same way. Yeah. Right. The, the it, sleep quality was not there. Those two nights that we were away from. It is number. very, very true. Uh, and, and one thing, I don't know, we just had a little cold blast here in Dallas and I don't know if this is true for you or is all in my head, but it's, it's funny how like the sleep number beds, they just, they're always the right temperature. Yeah. So my wife has the, we have the foot warmer on ours. And so she's got that on a timer. So it's literally kicked in perfect hot for her when she gets in bed, but like it normally cools me. So I usually sleep cooler than I have on any bed. Cause I usually sleep really hot. Well, it was really cold and you know, our house, we, we don't turn our heater up super high. Uh, and that's a whole fight with me and my wife, but that's a whole nother topic. But is I felt like, okay, this bed is now warmer. Like it, 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 it it's weird how it just kind of, yeah. it's okay. Look, it's always the right temperature. Yeah. Well, it's a smart bed. So that's, that's right. what it does. So it, be warned if you go out and get you a sleep number bed, which we hope that you all do. Vacations are it, less enjoyable. It, vacations are less enjoyable. It's going to spoil you. So anyway, go get yourself a sleep number. That's sleepnumber.com. Uh, and then they have retail stores, get yourself to a local retail store. So anyway, wellness tip of the week. And again, this ties perfectly in what we're going to talk about today. This ties perfectly to people who are uh, setting out on a new fitness journey mm -hmm. as we speak uh, here in the new year. And it's the two biggest keys or the two most important factors, if you will, to any wellness program. If you don't have these two things, you're doomed to fail. You're for sure going to fail if you don't take care of these two fundamental aspects uh, whenever you're setting out on your wellness journey. And those two aspects are number one is adherence, mm -hmm. basically your ability to stick to something. And number two is your effort. Mm -hmm. What sort of effort are you putting in? So let's, t let's touch on number one adherence. So as an example, when I was in college, I had a strength coach and actually this was post college. So this was the year that I was training to, for the, for the pro day, uh, getting myself ready for, for the NFL pro day. And my college coach wrote me up a program and put together my weight workouts, my running workouts, everything that I needed to do for that year for me to get to where I wanted to go. And if you take that program and you stack it up, was it the world's greatest program? 
Probably not, right? There, there's probably aspects of that program that you could pick apart and you say this percentage was wrong or maybe this duration of your workout could have been better, whatever. Mm. You could dissect that program. It wasn't the world's greatest program is, is what I'm trying to say. Mm. But it worked for me. That was the best shape I've ever gotten. That was the strongest I've ever been. And that was the fastest I've ever been. Mm. It worked because I showed up every single day and I stuck mm. to the program. I followed it to a T every day of that year. It didn't matter again that it wasn't the world's greatest program. What matters is that I stuck to it and I got results as uh, based off of that. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when we start out on a fitness program and I'm just as guilty as anybody else on this, most people, the biggest thing that holds them back is sticking and trusting to the plan. Mm -hmm. They start for four weeks and they're super motivated and they're not seeing the results immediately they want to see and they jump to the next thing. Mm -hmm. because the next thing is what's going to be is what really, it's really going to get me over the hump and that doesn't work three weeks in. And so I jump to the, to the next program. And so all you do is called program hopping. All you do is yeah. you jump from program to program because you think the next thing, whether it's boredom, whether it's lack of results, whatever it is for you, you're not adhering to the program, the world's greatest program, every single aspect thought out perfectly does nothing for you if you don't stick to it. Mm -hmm. So that's aspect number one is yeah. adhere to the program yeah. and stick to and it. And I just think honestly, and you mentioned it like consistent consistency outweighs programming every day of the week. That's right. You could, you could have the perfect plan and I feel like everybody's like, Oh, what's the perfect diet for me? Or what's the perfect workout or what's the per perfect, you know, exercise or what's going to get me excited. And, and you, you're always looking for that. No, the consistency and, and to your story, it's the same. It's the same with me when I was training for my pro day, when I was there twice a day, you know, you always say, Oh, you're overtraining or you're overdoing this. No, you know what? I was the strongest I'd ever been. I was the fastest I'd ever, I ever was. It was, I was the leanest I ever was. I mean, all of the things that I was trying to do because I was consistent. That's I right. was there every single day now, twice a day. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure that leads into your second point yeah. of effort. But if you look, if you walk, every single day, if you just walk every day, I guarantee you that you will see better results in a year than, oh, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to work out three days a week and I'm going to, I'm going to hit the weights hard and I'm going to do this. Your, your body is going to see a better result. If you are doing something maybe less effective, but consistently, right. I guarantee you, you will see better results. It may not. Okay. Yeah. You may not be as, as strong or you may not be as, but your body and wellness, and that's what we're talking about here is we're talking about wellness, will be better if you do something every day for a year than if you are sporadic with the right program. Yeah, I get the question still to this day all the time, especially whenever I was in the fitness industry. What's the best program for me? You touched on this a second. Ago. What's the best program for me? Yeah. And my answer was always Show the same. <laughs> the best program for you is the one that you can stick to. Yeah. Again, like Tyler said, whether it's walking every single day of the year, mm -hmm. if you stick to that, you're going to see results. I don't care if that's not the quote unquote ideal program. Yeah. If you can't stick to it, it's not going to work. Yeah. If you can't adhere to the program, it's not going to work. And again, I get it. It's, it's enticing to jump from thing to thing, thinking it's the next best option for you, mm -hmm. but you have to stick to something, find a program, stick with it long enough to see it through. Yeah. And, and what you're not saying is you're not saying that, Hey, look, pick one thing and then just stay with that. That's not what it is. If, if there's a plan in place saying, okay, hey, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to be consistent. And at week eight, I'm going to switch it up yep. at week 16. I'm going to switch it up again, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. But if you've got a plan, not saying you can't, you, okay, hey, you've got to do push ups for 365 days right. straight. It's not what we're saying. We're just saying pick something that keeps you consistent every single day. And if it's built in to adjust and change movements, change focuses on different body parts, whatever it is, but you have to be consistent. Well, and that's the thing. Changing your program is not the same thing as jumping from program yeah. to program. Yeah. You have to adjust things as you get stronger. If you did push the same amount of push ups every day for a year, eventually you're going to run into a plateau where you're not going to make progress. Yeah. You have to be, you have to be constantly changing elements of that mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. The point is sticking to something long enough to see it through, yeah. which leads to, to aspect number two of the most important things. And that's effort. Mm -hmm. Again, world's greatest program written down on paper, the correct sets, the correct reps, mm -hmm. every single thing is accounted for. If that in, in a dream world, if that's what you had in front of you, 
but you're not putting in the effort. You're not executing on that plan with the best effort and intent possible for that day. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see results. Mm -hmm. The last year or so of my life, I consistently have been showing up to the gym, which is great. That's step number one. But if I'm being honest with myself, it's been very much a check the box mentality. Mm -hmm. I haven't been going into it with the effort required to truly see. So have I been seeing changes? Yes. But are they as good as they could have been had I been putting in the required right. effort? No, they have not been. Yeah. So yes, I've stuck to the plan, but now the second phase of that is make sure that your effort is there. Don't just go. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough just to show up and think that that's going to do everything for you. Mm -hmm. There has to be a level of effort. Now, does that mean you go balls to the wall every single day? No, it doesn't. There's planned well, days yeah. where less intensity yeah, is it's, required. It's planned, but, and here's the thing too, is like effort, um, effort looks different. I think, and I, effort is, there's there's some days that the effort that you need to put in is getting up and getting out of bed right. and getting to the gym. That's the effort. That's a good point. Is getting yourself, when it's really cold, and I've but I've got to go for a run or a walk or I've got to do something, getting out and doing it. That is the effort that you need to put in it. And then other days, the effort is, okay, look, I recognize, like, I'm here. I might as well go all in on this right. and do everything as best as I can and, and put all of my focus and effort in, in you know, you know, achieving, you know, something that I couldn't achieve before. Right. That's the goal, but effort every day looks different. It looks different for different people. Some people that have been training for a long time, it's like, okay, Hey, yeah, try to try to hit a new PR on a three rep max. Mm -hmm. That's the effort. Okay. Now the effort for, for somebody else, maybe, Hey, get five minutes on the Stairmaster. Get five minutes today. You're here. You got up. That's part of it. But get five minutes. Mm -hmm. Or for somebody else, it's at the end of the workout, you're supposed to do abs or you're supposed to do some other, you know, auxiliary work. Get it in instead of leaving early. That's the effort. That's right. But yes, also in the moment, it's like, okay, hey, I've got, I've got eight reps on this set. Six. Mm, I'm going to shut it down. Right. No, get all eight. That's right. So That's right. be better than what your mind tells you what you want to do. That is the effort. That's right. That's right. So to recap, the two biggest fundamental elements of any program, because I know we're all starting new programs right now, <laughs> is make sure you stick with it long enough to see the results and make sure you're putting the appropriate effort scaled mm -hmm. to that day. As Tyler said, some days the best effort you got is literally just getting out of bed mm -hmm. and showing up. Mm -hmm. Other days, it's like, man, I feel really good today. Okay, push yourself that day. Yeah. Make sure you're giving full effort. So adherence and effort, which leads us into perfectly – Okay, so I get it. I, I got to stick to something long enough, uh, and I've got to put in great effort. But how do I create habits? Mm -hmm. How do I create this in me to be able to stick to these things, right. to be able to do these things? It's, it's really hard to stick to something, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a work, whether it's a wellness, whether, whatever it is. It's really hard when you feel like you've got to start over every day, and you got to talk yourself into yeah. it every single day. Right. Creating habits to where it's more of a secondary, it's... I don't have to think about it. It's just, it's just kind of, I just do it now. It's right. an automatic. Yeah. Which leads us to the book, like I said, that I read Atomic Habits. Uh, and, and as I said, I mentioned this, this is the number one book on Amazon mm -hmm. right now. So clearly this is a, a topic that people are interested in. I was going to say. Clearly this is on a lot of people's minds. Um, but if you've never heard of this book, you've never read it, there's, a, there's an author, his name is James Clear. And he actually opens up the book by talking about this. So when, when he was in high school, he was at ba baseball practice, and mm -hmm. a teammate of his was taking practice swings and swung and let go of the bat as he was swinging. Freak accident, bat comes in, hits James in the face, knocks him out immediately. He has to be rushed to the hospital, mm -hmm. emergency surgeries, has to relearn how to walk and talk and do all these different things from this freak accident. And so what this set into motion for him was – this desire well number one he had to do it to survive he had to take these steps and create these habits to bring himself back to a level of normalcy mm -hmm. but it also set in motion once he was back to normal of interest in this topic okay why are habits effective what is the science behind it? why does our brain create habits what's the best way for people to accomplish and set these habits and establish these habits for whatever it is that they're going after. And so that's what this book is about. It's about how can you, what are some practical steps that you can apply? Because everybody talks about, you know, I want to accomplish this or I want to do that. And we get three weeks in and then we quit. 
because mm. we didn't establish that habit. And that's the goal of this book is, okay, how can you keep yourself mm. from doing that thing? And so obviously there's an introductory period. And, 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 you know, one of the things he talks about in the introduction is small habits make a big difference. And Tyler, I want to get your, your opinion on this, uh, but I do want to read from the book, a little excerpt from the book. So from the book, it says, it is so easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. Too often we convince ourselves that massive success requires massive action. Whether it is losing weight, building a business, writing a book, winning a championship, or achieving any other goal, we put pressure on ourselves to make some earth-shattering improvement that everyone will talk about. Meanwhile, improving by 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it isn't even noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference in a, a tiny improvement can make over time is astounding. Yeah. What do you think about that? So it's, it couldn't be more spot on. And, and talking from the athletic field, um, you think, you know, you, you we're amidst the playoffs in the NFL, right? This is a, it's a really exciting time for the sport of football. Um, so the habits that, that were created in spring – and in training camp, the things that, hey, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to spend 45 minutes and I'm going to watch film just on footwork or I'm going to watch film just on hand placement or I'm going to work look at mechanics of throwing the ball, whatever it may be. Those habits that you established in spring that nobody, nobody sees, right? It's not like, hey, I'm going to learn how to jump through the roof and be able to go up and moss somebody. Like, it's... Hey, I'm going to make sure that um, on this uh, on this dig right here, I'm making sure I'm crisp and I'm not bleeding deep and I'm keeping it level or coming back to the quarterback. Right. The little tiny habits that you create playing football are what now are paying dividends right mm -hmm. now in the multiple, you know, multiple ones in the book. He talks about um, the European cycling team. Right. Mm -hmm. And what he what he talks about is they brought in this new coach and it wasn't this overhaul like, all right, guys. We're coming in and uh, we're gonna we're gonna train and we're gonna ride 200 miles a day and we're gonna be the most uh, you know we don't, we're gonna have the most endurance we're gonna be the strongest we're gonna be this this it was tiny tiny little changes like I mean and I'm making this up right now because this wasn't in the book but like tire pressure okay we're gonna make sure our tire pressure is always on point we're gonna make sure that um, our chain is lubed correctly. We're going to make sure, and you stack all these tiny, tiny little habits up. And ultimately over the long haul, it makes an exponential improvement. So you look at the European or the, the British cycling team. So the British cycling team was trash before mm, this right. coach comes in. Now they're the most decorated cycling team on the planet whether it comes to the Tour de France, whether it comes to Olympics, whatever, whatever competition, because, and it wasn't, it wasn't, Hey, as soon as this coach took over, boom, year one, this was the best team ever. It was year four, year five, year six, year 10 that you're like, Oh, I'm starting to see all those tiny little habits. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, it was, it was one of those things that I had to learn. Um, I had to learn early on that, it's the little habits for me personally, I'm just speaking from my own personal journey is that, okay, look, I, I had to have those little habits. I had to make sure that I spent the time in the film room. I had to make sure I spent the time working on mobility. That was the biggest deal. Like for me, for me as a fullback, one of the hardest things, cause I'm a stiff guy just overall was being able to have hip flexibility and mobility to where I could lower my pad level while playing full speed. And so anytime you're making contact, and I was a fullback and that was my job, anytime I made contact, the lo low man wins. It's basic concept, right? It's leverage, low man wins. So for me, it was tiny little habits every single day. So every single day after practice, I hit the bag, the, uh, I'm sorry, the sled. I hit the sled 20 times every single day before and after practice, 20 times. Mm -hmm. And it was something that, yeah, like, okay, it took me, you know, it took me an extra 10 minutes every day out on the field. But by the time I got into my last year, it was the very first time that I would actually be able to go play full speed and not have to think about it. And I was the lower man. Mm. 
Otherwise, my career, it was like, okay, get low, get low, get, get low. And now I'm focused on that. And I'm not, it, it, it just, I, I wasn't able to react if, if the linebacker or safety or defensive lineman, you know, made an adjustment or moved or tried to slip me. It was, it was all those little habits that year six in the NFL that finally paid off over, you know, however many reps I took hitting yeah. the sled or running through the shoots. The shoots are, if for those of you that aren't familiar, the shoots are essentially, it's just a big cage with a, with a top on it that forces you to be lower. You hit your head on a right. you know, metal cage. So those over my career helped me in my last year, which was like, it was kind of, I was salty at the end. It was like, damn, I'm playing the best football that I've ever played right now. Like, and it's done. <laughs> but, but that, those little habits as a fullback, that is what ultimately made the the difference mm -hmm. over the long haul. Yeah. And I didn't see it. And it was frustrating because like, why am I doing, why am I doing this? I'm still high. I'm still high. I'm still high. In in the film room, my coach, Klutz, get low. Klutz, get low. Klutz, get low. And then finally, my last season, it was like, all right, good. Dude, great pad level. Out of way to put your, you know, your yeah. face in his chest. Yeah. And that, so those are the little habits, right. you know, that, that it, I guess, translated to me. Yeah. And that's interesting that, that, you know, that you had the awareness at the time to make small change. See, when I read that first, it makes total sense. But when mm -hmm. I read that, I was like, that is the total opposite of anything I ever thought. <laughs> yeah. Because how many people do you know, they say, uh, I want to start getting in better shape. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. Yeah. I'm going to overhaul my whole diet. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the, that's the first thing you think to do is mm -hmm. I got to, I got to show up to the gym a whole lot of times mm -hmm. and I got to completely overhaul my diet. Yep. That's, that's where your mind goes. Whereas what he's saying is instead of saying you go to the gym five days a week and you don't go any today, yeah. how about yeah. you start with, I'm going to go to the gym two days a yeah. week. But we think the five days is going to be the magic formula yeah. to get us to our goal. And it's going to get us there a lot faster. Yeah. Whereas the reality is maybe two days is best to build mm -hmm. that habit and establish that habit. Mm -hmm. So why do we prefer big changes, big, big actions, big goals? I thought this was interesting uh, in the book from the book. He says, we often dismiss small changes because they don't seem to matter very much in the moment. If you go to the gym three days in a row, you're still out of shape. We make a few changes, but the results never seem to come, never seem to come quickly. And so we slide back into our previous routines. Unfortunately, the slow pace of transformation also makes it easy to let a bad habit slide. So if you eat unhealthy meal, an unhealthy meal today, the scale doesn't move much. So, Dude, okay. And stop right there. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause I think it's, it's really, it's really important to focus on, <clears throat> excuse me. It's really important to focus on. Yes. We create habits and we think, habits are are only good things yeah no that's that's not the case there right. are, there are bad habits right that that we create and that's why it's so funny because the challenge i think with a lot of people and i'm guilty and i'll, and I'll be the first one to say these last two weeks have been rough mm -hmm. by rough i mean i've enjoyed myself yeah right? I've eaten, I haven't sl I've slept in, like all of the things that you're not supposed to do. And everybody always starts this January 1st transformation. It's like, all right, I'm just going to get everything that I can get right before January 1st. And then I'm going to hit it hard. Well, what I have done and what a lot of people like me do is it is, it makes it so much harder because now you've given up the habits that you've worked on all year and you've got to recreate them. Mm -hmm. It takes a whole lot less time to create a bad habit than it does to break it. And so in these last two weeks for me, those bad habits make a big, big difference as you're starting to create good habits yeah. and starting to make a transformation. Yeah. And so, and, and you mentioned like, okay, Hey, I got to go five days a week. What about a good habit of, Hey, I'm going to wake up at 30 minutes before I, I should wake up and I'm going to slam a glass of water. That's mm -hmm. one small habit, right? It's not going to the gym. It's not, but it is a healthy habit that gets your, your uh, metabolism going. It gets just your overall system started for the day and charged up, ready to go, so that you have a better chance mm -hmm. of, of being successful through right. the day from wellness. But it's like, okay, I'm going to make this big grand gesture that I feel like, okay, if I go, if I hit it hard and I'm five days a week, I'm going to see results in six weeks. Yeah. Because we can, we can pick a goal. And we can picture saying, yeah, I can work hard for six weeks. 
reality. Reality is you get to week three, you don't see any changes and you quit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that leads into progress. Let me finish up one more thing on, on the, uh, the small. So he says, making a choice that is 1% better or 1% worse seems, ins- seems insignificant in the moment. But over the span of moments that make up a lifetime, these choices determine the difference between who you are and who you could be. Mm-hmm. So to your point, waking up and slamming one glass of water doesn't seem like a whole lot. But if you do that over a lifetime, that's going to compound because mm-hmm. hydration is huge, right? Yeah. On an overall health from a health standpoint, yeah. right? Or on the opposite end of that, think about if every time there's cookies out on the counter or at the, at the break room, right? Mm-hmm. You have a habit of going and grabbing a cookie. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's just one cookie. Yeah. But if you compound that every single day, that yeah. 1% difference yeah. leads to massive weight gain at, yeah. at the end of the year or yeah. whatever it is, right? So that's, and to your point, I, I think we, or at least my tendency is, you know, massive actions versus small actions. I think I want the results. I want progress. Mm-hmm. And I think by taking these massive actions, mm-hmm that I'm going to get the progress faster. Yeah. But then I end up quitting three, four weeks down the line, and then I don't get the progress. That's right. And so one thing that he highlights about progress, which was interesting, and why it seems to come slowly at first, he says, you expect to make progress in a linear fashion, and it's frustrating how ineffective changes can seem during the first days, weeks, and even months. It doesn't even feel like you're going anywhere. When you finally break through, people will call it an overnight success. The outside world only sees the most dramatic event rather than all that preceded it. But you know that it's the work you did long ago when it seemed that you weren't making any progress that makes the jump today possible. And I thought that was really, really good to remind yourself. I think of Darren, for instance. It's easy to look at Darren's life and say he was handed a multi-million dollar contract at 21, Right. He was this NFL star. He had this massive career. And it's easy to think, okay, well, Darren was an overnight success at 21. He was handing millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, what was Darren doing at the age of seven? He was out running sprints. Mm -hmm. He was putting in work. So from seven to 21, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So, yes, from an outsider's perspective, it looked like all of a sudden at such a young age, he's handed all this money. Yeah. But he was laying the groundwork at seven years old. And the overnight success concept is I love this. I absolutely love it. And we had Aaron Watson on and Mm -hmm. and, and I brought this up in the past is he has a song called fence post. Right. And he talks about how, you know, he loves playing country music and he went to Nashville and he was told he'll never make it. Uh, He doesn't have it. Um, And so he just kept plugging away, kept plugging away, kept plugging away. 10 years later, that same record exec that told him he wasn't going to make it is like, Oh my gosh, you're, you're, you're a big deal. Like we want to sign you. We want to do this. You, you're an overnight success. He goes, yeah, I was an overnight success in just over 10 years, <laughs> 10 years. Yeah, that's and it's one. so true. And think about, and, and, and I'm going to speak and I'm going to brag on you a little bit is think about your first three and a half years in real estate. And that's what we do mm-hmm. on our day job. Three and a half years. It was a freaking grind yeah. and it sucked cold calls. I mean, you and I, I don't think there's anything you and I both hate more than cold calls. <laughs> and we used, to, we used to lock each other in a room and be like, hey, you want to take this one, Ben? <laughs> no, Ty, you got it. Yeah. To, ben, we're, you want to take it? We're making, no, 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 Ty. Yeah, we're making this argument as the phone's ringing. You got it. <laughs> no, 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 you, you got, got it. You got it. <laughs> They're literally calling us back. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things. And then, and then now there's two years that you've been a top producer at our company. Two years in a row. Mm-hmm. You've been, and you, and you kind of, and I'm for sure for you, you're like, wait, I don't, I don't feel like I've done anything different. No. I, I, yeah. I still feel lost. <laughs> right. It, but that's what I'm saying is like, but you, you laid the foundation. It's okay. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be on top of answering emails. I'm going to be on top of turning around assignments. I'm going to be, I, I say assignments, you know, jobs. I'm going to be on top of servicing clients. I'm going to be on top of, you know, surveying the market. I'm going to be all these things that we did at the very beginning you just keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing all these small little habits that you created, you know, in the office. Now you're a top producer in the company. And it's one of those overnight deals. You don't realize it until you're there. And it's the 1% that makes a difference. It's right. the 1% change. And to relate it, and we've talked about this before too, is you talk about if I, if I shoot to lose 1%, 1% of my body weight a month, a month. Okay. And I'll just use my instance. Okay. If I lose two and a half pounds, two and a half pounds a month, 
at the end of the year. Which, by the way, doesn't sound like a whole lot, right? No. Two and a half pounds a month, it's like, no, that's, that's easy. That's what? nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> but if I'm disciplined enough to, to make sure I take care of that 1%, the small habits, two and a half pounds a month, now I'm looking at... I'm looking at 33 pounds at the end of the year. One That's year, huge. it's 33 pounds. That's a big difference. Huge difference. If you look at somebody that lost 30 pounds, you're going to be like, I kind of almost don't recognize you. Yes. Like my wife over the last year has lost 15 pounds, not even 15 pounds, like 12 pounds. Mm. Sorry, babe. Put, no. Putting your business all on the streets. <laughs> but like literally people come up to her. We're with... Um, New Year's. This is not a. This is not a name drop. So let me. We're with Romo uh, for New Year's. We've done it for eight years now. That's kind of our tradition. It's the only time I see him. Mm -hmm. New Year's, um, and he literally walks up. He goes, "Okay, I. Who are you? I don't even recognize you <laughs> because of a twelve pound right. difference." Right. <clears throat> if the one percent, and she was really focused on. Hey, I'm going to focus on one percent. And it's one of the podcasts I think you talked about about weight loss. Like, hey, don't pick these grandiose goals. Like, hey, I gotta, I gotta lose fifteen pounds. No, focus on losing one pound a month. Yeah, two pounds a month, whatever Huge it difference. is. And it is a game changer. It really is. The well, one percent makes a difference. It's the I've heard it connected to. It's like the hockey stick effect. Have you ever heard that that metaphor before? If you think of a hockey stick, it's got that real long. Mm. We'll call it a shaft, and mm. then it leads up into whatever the. The bottom part, it, 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 there's a huge increase. So if you were laying a hockey stick on the ground, there's a huge incline. Oh, I was like, okay, is it incline. standing up or yeah. is it laying down? Okay. Yeah, there's okay. a huge massive incline yeah. Yeah. In, in the curve of the uh, hockey stick. Yep. And that's what they talk about success, which we talked about a second ago. You do all these things for mm -hmm. so long and you never see any effect from it. Or you don't think. You never see mm -hmm. any progress. And then all of a sudden, because you laid that groundwork for two, three, four, yeah. ten years before, yes. all of a sudden you take off all of a sudden. And it looks like you were overnight success. Yeah. But the point is, is that you were laying the groundwork for years right. and years and years. So I think that's where a lot of us get hung up on, on progress is after three weeks of this new diet, we expect to see all this weight loss. And that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. What you're doing those first three weeks is you're establishing habits. You're establishing fundamentals that are going to, in six months, make yeah. the big difference. And I think of like, just think of entrepreneurs. And we got David over here, who's, who's the, exactly that and is, is in that phase. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, it's all these little, little, little battles that you win along the way. All these little habits that you create, these systems that you put in place. Like it may not, you, you putting your, your team through a weekly training, you're not going to see the immediate goals, right. the immediate results of that. But now when you've got 100 employees and you're all doing it and it's translating to 100 plus million in revenue as a company, that's when back in the start, when you had three people on your team and you were just pouring into them, pouring into them, pouring into them, that's when it translates. Yeah, that's right. The next section he goes into, and then Tyler, I'm curious what your, what your reaction to this is. And, and the title of it is, is eye catching. And I'm sure that's obviously the point. He says, forget about goals, focus on systems mm -hmm. instead. It says prevailing wisdom claims that the best way to achieve what we want in life, getting into better shape, building a success, successful business, relaxing more and worrying less, spending more time with friends and family is to set specific actionable goals. Mm -hmm. For many years, this is how I approach my habits too. Eventually I began to realize that my results had very little to do with the goals I set and nearly everything to do with the systems I followed. What's the difference between systems and goals? Systems are about the process that lead to those results. If you're an entrepreneur, your goal might be to build a million dollar business. Your system is how you test product ideas, hire employees, and run marketing campaigns. Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. Yes. Like, what do you think about that? Oh, I love this. I love this. And we had, um, we had, and there's probably going to be a lot of correlation to this, but Nir Eyal, we had him on, on the show way back. And if you haven't, if you haven't heard that episode, that's a book we need to, we need to go we do. through, by the way. We absolutely do. Um, it's going to, we'll get a little break in between because there's a lot of carryover, I think, between a lot of these and, and even the next point, very much so. Um, but one of the things is, look, you can have these goals and it's like you can want to do something, but if you don't have the, the system, the foundation, the framework to do it in place, 
you know, and again, we're go back to fitness. If you don't, if you don't get up and already have your workout for the day written out and you're just like, Hey, I'm just going to go to the gym and I'm going to figure it out. It's a whole lot harder to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. If I don't already have my meals prepped for the week, it's a whole lot harder to follow a good meal plan. Right. If you don't have your schedule for the week on, okay, hey, I've got this block to do this, I've got this block to do that, it's really hard to accomplish the goals that you want to if you're just like, hey, I'm just kind of going to go through the day and take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. If a system is not in place, it's really hard. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying it's really hard. And I would argue that it is impossible to reach the potential without a system. Right. You may be successful, yep. but you may not reach your potential. Right. And so if a system is not in place, it's very easy to get lost. It's literally like saying, hey, I'm going to drive to California. I'm just going to head west. Yep. Okay, well, what roads, what, what are you going to take? What's the fastest route? Okay, where are the stops? Okay, uh, is this highway? Uh, oh, you know what? This one says west. All right, so it's going to take me west. But then I go here, and then the only way I can go from there is north. I mean, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible if you don't have a roadmap laid out to be as efficient and reach the maximum potential that you can reach yep. in whatever goal that is. Yeah, the, the highlight of that section and the eye-catching part of the section is goals are, uh, he's basically saying goals are irrelevant without these systems. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody's setting goals right now, and that's great. You need mm -hmm. to have something that you're shooting for. Yeah, Things are much easier when you know what you're, what you're after. Yeah. But his whole point is if you don't have your systems in place, yeah. like you said, if I don't have a roadmap, yeah. And maybe I don't know exactly what the roadmap no, is. That's right. But you have to establish some sort of system to at least get you going in the right direction. That's right. This podcast is a good example. We still don't know. We, we have a goal in mind. We know where we want to go. We don't know exactly how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. But we started somewhere. We yeah. started with a system which was to show up consistently. Yeah. And that's what we started. Now, over time, we hire the right people to help us, you know, do the things that we don't do well, mm -hmm. right? Over time, we figure out the systems a little yeah. bit better. But the point is we started in a direction, we had a goal, mm -hmm. and we set up systems along the way right. to reach that goal. That's so right. if you don't know all the answers today to get to that, to that, whatever that goal is of yours, that's okay. Yeah. Just start with what you do know. Start with yeah. a small, that 1% step mm -hmm. that we're talking about. Start with some sort of system because, again, the goal is great. But if you don't have any system in place to get you there, yeah. you're never going to achieve and, that And goal. look, I want to acknowledge that that's the scariest part in executing a goal is figuring out that system, is creating the system. I know, I mean, you can be paralyzed by trying to have the perfect yep. system in yep. place. I've been there a million times in my life. And so yep. to your point, you've got to just get started. Pick something. If it's, hey, um, you know, I want to pick up, I want to pick up hunting. Okay, that's that's your goal. It's like I want to. I really want to pick up hunting. I, I want to be outside. I want to spend time with my kids. Whatever it is. Okay, it's not like okay. Now I've got to be the best bow hunter up in uh, the Arctic Circle for um, elk. Not elk. Reindeer. What's the other word for reindeer? Um, uh, I have gosh. no idea. I'm not a hunter. <laughs> Bro, you've read that. We read the same book. <laughs> reindeer. Yeah. It's, anyways, moose. Whatever, dude. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, we read with um, Donnie yeah. Vincent where he took what's his name up Michael Ely yeah Michael Easter Easter yeah, Easter yeah. yeah anyways point is I want to be a hunter the I don't have to create the okay I've got to get this bow I've got to get this rifle I've got to get this I've got to get that in place it's like no guess what hey uh, just go buy a cheap rifle and start shooting at the range yep. Just start. Start. You start have you to are. start. Yeah. Get the momentum going. Yep. Start with the 1%. Yep. It doesn't mean you go out and get the most expensive rifle out there. Right. right. Start with what you have. Start right. with what you can. Yep. Uh, the next section he talks about, and this is interesting because we've had this discussion Dude, many, this, many times. This one's gold right here. Identity habits, or sorry, outcome habits mm -hmm. versus identity habits. What's an outcome habit? Something like, like you say, I, I want to read more. That would be an outcome-based mm -hmm. habit. Versus an identity-based based habit, you would say, I am a reader. Yes. So from the book, he says, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. Mm. It's one thing to say, I'm the type of person who wants this. It's something very different to say, I'm the ty type of person who is this. True behavior change is identity change. You might start a habit because of motivation, but the only reason you'll stick with one is that it becomes part of your identity. Mm -hmm. For example... The goal is not to read a book. The goal is to become a reader. The goal is not to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. 
When your behavior and your identity are fully aligned, you are no longer pursuing behavior change. You're simply acting like the type of person you already believe yourself to be. One example he used, a, a client of his lost over 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. And she did it. Obviously, there was a lot of factors, but one of the main things that got her there was this identity-based mm -hmm. habit formation. So all she did, not all she did, she did a lot of things, but one of the main things she did was when she came up to a decision point, when it was time to make it some sort of decision about her nutrition or about her fitness, she would simply ask herself, what would a healthy person do in this situation? Mm -hmm. So she didn't necessarily say, I want to lose 100 pounds or I want to do, I, I want to become a healthy person or I want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. She said, what would a healthy person do when faced with this decision? Mm -hmm. And to me, that was quite a light bulb <laughs> moment yeah. of that makes so much sense to me to think if I want to be a, you know, if I want to continue producing at a high level at our business, what would somebody who does that, what would a top achieving broker in our industry do mm -hmm. in this situation? Yeah. And it's just a, a, a subtle shift in your mind yeah. that can make a big, massive difference. So I think uh, there's, there's, um, there's three, there's three groups of people I think like that are the most like zealous about what they do. Um, Crossfitters. Crossfitters. <laughs> right. And what do they call themselves? Crossfitters. Well, yes, but what are they mostly, what are they, they I'm an athlete. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. They identify, yeah. there's an identity right. that they are an athlete. Yeah. As Kenny Powers would say, Hey, I'm not just trying to be the best at exercising. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. what's the point of it? And, and not every CrossFitter competes, but they identify themselves as athletes. And this was something I criticized. I'm like, bro, come on. You're not an athlete. Like you do pull-ups and push-ups. like yeah. freaking cool, like whatever. But now getting into it, I'm like, okay, I could see it. Like doing a muscle up. Mm -hmm takes a little bit of athleticism. Now you don't have to be a world-class athlete to do it, Yeah, but I get it. The other one is vegans. Yep. Vegans, they don't say, Hey, I eat, I just eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. They say, or I want to eat vegetables. It's I'm a vegan. Yeah. I follow this plan. This is something right. I believe in. I identify as this. And so therefore that's what I eat. Right. It's a whole lot harder to sit in the lunchroom and say, Hey, uh, I'm a vegan and then reach over and grab a stick of beef jerky. Right. Right. Because that's all that's available. Yeah. No, I'm a vegan. I'm going to follow it. No, that's a great point because they have taken on the identity of a vegan. A mm -hmm. vegan does not eat beef jerky. Right. right. So instead of saying, I want to eat a bunch of vegetables, yeah. they're saying, no, I am this. This is yeah. who I am. Yeah. So as a person who this is, so as whatever I'm trying to say. So this being part of my identity, yeah. that's just not something I partake in. That's right. Because that's not what somebody who is a vegan does. And, and those two groups of people historically have been very consistent in what they do. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they create the habits. Now, now I will say there is a dark side to this. Right? Yeah. And, and I think the most perfect example or the best example in my life has been football. Yeah. Oh, right? that's yeah. Because yeah. I identified as a football player. The problem with identifying as a football player is at some point, no matter who you are in the history of mankind, mm -hmm. football ends for everybody. Yeah. So if that's all you ever do and that's all you ever see yourself as and that's all you ever identify as, mm -hmm. that's going to be a rude awakening when that's no longer what you that's do. That's 100%. So that's the dark side of identifying. So that's a whole yeah. episode. Right. 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 That's because a completely you can be different. a CEO, you can be military, you can be a mom, you can be an athlete, whatever it is, right? There's the dark side to that. But I would say this is do you believe that you could have reached the level of football that you reached if you didn't say, hey, I'm Ben the football player? I'm a football player. No, I don't think so. And that's and I think that's the point here yeah. is it's not – the point is not to take it to the, the place where you – that's all that, that's all that consumes yeah. you. That's the only thing you ever think yeah. about, and, yeah. and that's all your life is based around. The yeah. point is identifying yourself with a yeah. person that – and then and, does those. Things. And again, not to, not to hammer this too, too hard. Cause I want to, I want to hear what, what the book says about it. But I think of, of my journey when I was out of football mm -hmm. and it was a, it was really hard emotionally, but it was the idea that it was like, Hey man, I'm Tyler Klutz. Like I'm the Fresno state football player. I'm, I'm a football player. And when it's taken away, that motivation for me to continue pursuing it mm -hmm. allowed me to achieve it. Now, again, like you said, there's the unhealthy because there's a lot of people that chase something that is, that is not going to happen so hard. It, it's a detriment to their future and a detriment to their success. But 
for me, because I had that identification as a football player, it pushed me and said, I'm going to outwork everybody else that's actually where mm -hmm. I want to be because I'm a football player and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there's definitely a line there where you can take it too far, but the, yeah. the point is identifying yourself as somebody who does whatever action that's right. or who is yeah. whatever, whatever yeah. habit that you're trying to, to you take on. Ben, I'm an early riser. That's who I am. That's right. You get up every morning mm -hmm. and when you sleep till seven thirty or eight, and you, if you ever have in the last three, four years since I've known you, you're like, that's not who I am. Right. Like I get up. It feels weird. Right. Yeah. It feels different. Right. So yeah, you're right. It's no longer a choice I have to make. Yeah. It's just, that's just what I do. Yeah, that's right. That's who I am. I'm somebody that wakes up early and now that's it's right. become such a integral part of my life. Now I'm Tyler. I sleep till eight o'clock now. So <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and Hey, that, yeah, whatever it is for you, it, there's plenty of successful people that sleep yeah. till 8am. But for yeah. me personally, I've found that the best system I can establish in my, yeah. in my life is to wake up early and start right. on these things. That's right. So then he gets into a four step process of building a habit. Mm -hmm. And this is, this really feeds into and leads into the meat of the book, which are his four laws for, of behavior change. But before we get to the four laws of behavior change, which are going to be the future episodes, yeah. he talks about a four-step process of building a habit. So the process of building a habit can be divided into four simple steps. Cue, craving, response, and reward. The cue triggers your brain to initiate a behavior, a behavior. It is a bit of information that predicts a reward. Cravings are the second step, and they are the motivational force behind every habit. Without some level of motivation or desire, without, a cra without craving a change, we have no reason to act. Mm -hmm. The third step is the response. The response is the actual habit you perform, mm -hmm. which can take a form of a thought or an action. Whether a response occurs depends on how motivated you are and how much friction is associated with the behavior. If a particular action requires more physical or mental effort than you're willing to expend, then you won't do it. Finally, the response delivers a reward. Reward's the end goal of every habit. The cue is about noticing the reward. The craving is about wanting the reward. The response is about obtaining the reward. Rewards close the feedback loop and complete the habit cycle. So this, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, so uh, what was it? I guess it was a week before Christmas. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this and literally how this personally plays out is so I, uh, I had an afternoon where it was like for the first time, it was, uh, it was the 23rd and I shut it down and say, hey, look, on the 23rd, uh, after, after lunch, I'm going to shut it down. Um, Tiffany and the kids were at her mom's, uh, and it was literally just me. And so I, I had to run a couple errands. So, but I had the afternoon, right? And so I'm driving and I'm driving. It's actually like, uh, where is it? It's like between Melissa and Anna in the DFW Metroplex. If for those of you not here, you don't really know what that means, um, but it's it's on the northeast side of the Metroplex. So I'm driving and I and I get this cue because there's a billboard, Choctaw Casino and Resort, right? There's a cue, and I and once I had that cue, I'm like I'm thinking about it, I'm like, dang, I've got this craving. Like I really want I really want to go like visit a world class casino and resort. So I had a decision. I, I, had to, I had a choice to make this response or not. And it was like, okay, do I respond and do I drive the 40 minutes from where I was at and go experience something that it can't be replicated outside of Vegas, honestly. And so I did and I chose to. And so here's what happened is I had the reward. I went up there and I had a great meal at one of their seven restaurants there, all right? And I ended up coming back with an actual monetary reward, okay? The only reward I didn't get is I didn't stay the night because I had to come back right. and visit the kids, but the overall reward was an unbelievable afternoon. It was by myself. I didn't have to talk to anybody. It was great. And I was like really close to actually staying and seeing a movie too because um, they've got a movie theater. Um, but great meal, great gambling, I even watched some sports in their amazing sports bar. The pool, a little cold, but uh, it was honestly, this four step process to building a habit, I experienced and I now have the habit of going up to Durant, Oklahoma. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was brilliant. I've got nothing to add. That was Shock Talk Casino flawless. Resort. Thank You've you. done it again. Thank you for being you. You seamlessly weaved. You started going down the track that I had no idea where you're going, and that, that was brilliant. So well done. So get yourself up to Chalk Talk Casino Resort. So to wrap us up for today, because the next three mm. episodes is what we're really going to dive into the meat, which is the four laws of behavior change. But to preview those laws, and, and again, they tie with the cue, craving, response, mm. and reward. So the first law, which correlates with the cue, is to make it obvious. The second law, which correlates with the craving, is to make it attractive. Third law, which correlates with the response, is to make it easy. And the fourth law, which correlates with the reward, is to make it satisfying. So from the book, he says, whenever you want to change a behavior, you can simply ask yourself, how can I make it obvious? Number two, how can I make it attractive? Number three, how can I make it easy? And number four, how can I make it satisfying? Again, Q, craving, response, reward. If you've ever wondered why I don't do what I say I'm going to do, why I don't lose the weight or stop smoking or save for retirement or start that side business, why do I say something is important but never seem to make time for it? The answers to those questions can be found somewhere in these four laws. The key to creating good habits and breaking bad ones is to understand these fundamental laws and how to alter them to your specifications. Every goal is doomed to fail if it goes against the grain of human nature. Mm. And so that's what we're going to dive in these next three weeks. We're going to dive into these laws. We're going to break them down individually. Um, I'm excited about this series. I, I think too. already today, if it, you know, there was tons of takeaways from this book, just from today's discussion. We haven't even gotten mm -hmm. to the meat of the episode or the meat of the, the, the content. Mm -hmm. um, so join us as we go along in this. Go and pick yourself up the, a copy of Atomic Habits, again, by James Clear. You can get it on Amazon or wherever else books are sold. Mm -hmm. um, I already have the goals in my mind that are already established for me. I think business development is, is, is one mm -hmm. where I'm thinking of ways that I can apply these four laws mm -hmm. and how can I make these goals of mine, these habits of mine stick mm -hmm. by applying these laws. So I'm excited Love for this it. series. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Me too, man. Me too. Thanks for yeah putting putting this outline together. And I mean, you should see if, if you could if if you're not watching, um, and if you are, Ben's got post its throughout this thing because he's really dug into this book and really taken detailed notes about things that that are really are truly going to help. Yeah. And and the fact that this is the number one seller on Amazon tells me, and you've already said it, is that we have we have a huge need and desire for creating good habits. These last two years, I think some really bad habits have been put into place. Some really good ones. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, I think we've got a massive, massive yearning for, okay, hey, I want structure. I need, I need goals, but I need to know how to accomplish those goals That's as right. opposed to just these lofty goals that we create. Yeah. That's right. This is one of the book, best books I've read in a while. Uh, and like I said, I can't wait to dive into it further with you guys. Follow us on Instagram. Our name has changed. One shot. We're no longer the Darren Woodson Show. We are now at one.shot.pod on Instagram. We're also on YouTube, uh, the One Shot Podcast on YouTube. Uh, and then like Tyler said earlier, leave us a review on, on Apple. Those help us reach a wider audience, a broader audience. And again, we take that feedback and we apply it. Tyler said, Tyler's sister said we're a bunch of meatheads. She's tired of us just giving opinions. We took that advice, <laughs> we, we sought out the experts, and that's what we're doing in this series. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you have a great rest of the week and a good weekend, and we will see you next week.